you can just be lucky if you get on a roll and you make some good choices. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. there's some great players and they maybe didn't make the right choice at some point and it, they sort of And it up, went off in a different fork for them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so that was incredible getting uh, the gig with them. Do you think getting the gig with Nigel just introduced you to a ton of people that were just like essentially like really helpful throughout sort of like the early part of your career? Absolutely. In terms of introductions to other different situations and other musicians and things like that. Absolutely. They like, were so totally switched on. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and you obviously probably know all these guys now, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, when I see them, it's like, wow, you know, it, you know you're all in doing different things. But, um, you know, I see people from time to time get to play with them. It's just a, you know, it's yeah, a joy. Yeah. And it's funny because people expect them... They all play exactly the same as they did back in the day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and it's yeah. lovely with that, you know, because everybody's got their own personality as a player, you know. Uh, occasionally I get to play with Ian Thomas now, and that's great. And occasionally I get to play with Ralph. He's been on the road a lot with the yeah. Winter Boys. So, you know, it, it's just incredible. Or they might come in and dip on a show that I'm doing, or I might do a little session and somebody will turn up. So, oh, yeah, great. I was going to ask about the shows. When did the shows have, what, like the Western shows? When did you start getting into that? I was the luckiest man alive. Again, thank you to paraphernalia I got the gig because it's really ferociously you know hard to get in there isn't it you know there's a lot of people wanting those the West End gigs well I was very lucky because generally what happens is you get a gig on the road you'll do a touring show for a couple of years or a year or you'll do some pantos or whatever the MD moves up and you get dragged up with the MD it's always a who you know yeah. with all these things and just uh, I was asked to go and sit in I mean John Mole great lovely bass player who you know one of my heroes he uh was in starlight express and ralph was stepping in there and a keyboard player friend of mine paul honey who's a great writer lovely guy and they said oh john might need some depth do you want to go in so i was like okay and i'm very young i'm like 22 23 yeah but i kind of been rec the recommendation came as well because i was playing with paraphernalia he Got played you. with john and barbara right, and he okay, also played yeah. with gary moore in Coliseum too Got you. Yeah. So, I mean, he was such a great player. He played two bars of a shuffle with his audition with, uh, or 10 bars of a shuffle, whatever, with Coliseum. And Gary Moore stopped John Heisman, stopped the band and went, he's the guy. <laughs> Fantastic. And John told me a great story about uh, Gary Moore. He said he's playing his bass one day. He's thinking, this sounds really odd. This sounds really weird. Really sort of scratchy, but he's put his, no, it's not. Where's that coming from? So he walks over to Gary's side, and evidently yeah. Gary was quite deaf. Gary's got his own SVT on his side, but it's three times louder than John's with all the treble <laughs> turned up. So well, with all the treble with turned, all the treble yeah, turned yeah, yeah, yeah. up, so John's going, right, that's where it's all going. Yeah, from. yeah, 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 yeah. So, Amazing. but anyway, so John invited me in, and I got the pad, and then we went on the road with paraphernalia for. I don't know, 30, 40 gigs in Europe somewhere. Yeah. And I took the book with me, and I had a cassette of John playing the show. So every morning I'd get up and I'd play through one half and then we'd go to the next town and I'd play through the next half. So every day, I was every two days I was doing a show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I had all my page turns worked out, everything. Yeah, I had this neat yeah. little page turn because there was no breaks in one of the tunes into one of the others. So I thought if I put that one there, then I can just, when I need to, I can just flick that one off the end. And this is stuff that uh, you've got to do, isn't it? Yeah. You know, you really got to do this. Organise the, the yeah. charts. Yeah. And then I can see the whole chart. I haven't got to stop. I haven't even, you know... There, so I've got it all worked out. So I'm playing away. Ding, 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 ding. Great, here we go. Boom. And onto that page. Keyboard one leans down, picks up the part, and sticks it right in the middle where I'm reading. Oh, <laughs> he thought it'd fallen off. He thought it'd fallen off. So, being a little too well prepared, stupid ass. But anyway, it was fine. And John used to play these lovely little fills and stuff. And I thought, you know, if you were. With a show, you've got to be mindful of that you're emulating the guy that's in there. Yeah. Always, I think. So I copied all John's little things, and the band were really appreciative of this. So I used to, you know, get quite a few depths. Yeah, the, he, he ex basically expanded away from the ch the original chart and was putting things in that weren't written. Yes. And then you were emulating that. Okay. Yeah, so, yeah and I yeah, thought yeah. it would be good because, you know, I could play something there and it might not be appropriate or whatever. And... You know, I used to get quite a few depths, and the uh, musical supervisor, a guy called uh, Phil Edwards, and you know, a few years later, I did Saturday Night Fever for Phil, and I've done a few things for him. Yeah. So you know, people remember that you took care of it. 
yeah, yeah, as yeah, it yeah. were. So yeah. that was great. So yeah, Starlight got me started. Um, Depping. And the thing is, once you've done a show like that, which was, you know, a, a, you know, a, a long running successful show, yeah. the doors open to Depping other shows and the fixers get to know who you are. Yeah. So, but for me, it was so lucky because I didn't go in at the ground level. I went in quite, you <laughs> yeah, know, yeah, I yeah, sort yeah. of... So got that, a lucky break and just got in there. Yeah. yeah, so that was good for me. My first show that I did was the Blues Brothers, actually, which was at the Whitehall Theatre, which is now called the Trafalgar Studios. But that was a great fun gig. That We were actually on stage, no charts. Yeah, yeah. We were even choreographed. Really, yeah. yeah. Did you have your moves down? <laughs> me and Ian, the late, great Ian Aitken, guitar player, <laughs> we used to take the piss out of the moves a bit. And one time we were doing Shotgun Blues or something, and we both did this synchronised duck walk across the stage. And... At the half time, we got a knock on the door from the lady. That's oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What were you doing? <laughs> <laughs> you two. And Tony McCormick, the sax player, to his credit, walked up to the door and he goes, you never talk to my musicians like that again. And he said, you're banned from this room. So she never came back. And, but we had a great time on that show. Yeah, Because yeah, it was all yeah. those great, you know, great songs. And Con O'Neill and uh, Warwick Evans, who were the... Um, you know what's quite a well-known actor uh, Con's a very well-known actor now. they were great as uh, Jake and Elwood and then yeah, uh, yeah. And the second cast was uh, Brian Hibbard who, who's now sadly no longer with us uh, from the Flying Pickets the guy with oh, the right. yeah, yeah, yeah. and yeah, a guy yeah. called Simon Foster who's a fabulous singer so we, that was a great fun so yeah, I did yeah, about yeah. nine months in that and then you know and then I started dipping around a bit again because um, you've always been involved in the West End haven't you and, and doing this yeah show. I have yeah yeah, yeah. 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 And I'm very proud to sort of go into the show and like, you know, with Kinky Boots now and with the commitments, I just go in there to play absolutely the best I can every night. You know, those people have paid good money. Yeah, yeah, I'm just, yeah. I just go in there to absolutely nail it. And there's a couple of little things, again, even with this show and with the commitments before it, and where I find little base corners where I can kind of yeah, yeah, yeah. just... <laughs> you know just little things where i can stretch out just for a little thing you know just just yeah. to play something just to keep it you know interesting and as long as you don't transgress into sort of area of bad <laughs> yeah 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 but, you're um, safe yeah I mean, i'll be interested to listen to my performance because they taped a few shows just after christmas right for okay, yeah, a yeah. live album because they've got a broadway album because yeah. they, they've done it on broadway i think it's in canada i think they're touring it in the states and it's in Korea with Kinky Boots. So they're going to be putting out an album just straight live of what we've played. Yeah, yeah, straight so from the desk. Yeah, to yeah. to listen to that. Amazing. But, you know, there's a lot of clicks in it and stuff like that. Um, Was it through the West End stuff that you got into doing all the TV stuff? Because every time I switch on the TV, you're on there somewhere. Well, you seem to be anyway. Yeah, I mean, I've Even done... my wife, rec- this is true, my wife has never met you. She recognises you. She said, oh, it's Phil again. I'm like, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, when did the TV stuff start happening?